Hello, my name is Alistair and uh, this video is about my one of my passions in life which is Austin 7 Specials in fact hill climb cars in general but I've had this car that you can just see in the background for the last, been developing it for the last five years and what I'll do is I'll go through all the things that have been done to this car if you're an Austin 7 originality freak then this is not the video for you uh, however I'll show you what I've done to make this a car that I believe will do very well on hill climbs it's capable of doing 70 miles an hour on a straight road here's the car in question it is a 1937 Austin 7 originally it was an Austin Ruby and they converted to a super accessory special it has Bowden front suspension uh, it's independent front suspension so it's different from the original Austin 7. If you want a hill climb car to go quickly, uh, you don't just operate the engine, you have to operate the suspension, the steering, the engine, everything in order to get it to be stable and reliable. With the, we'll start with the engine. Uh, first of all, it's got twin SUs, I think the smallest SUs that they've ever made. They're originally out of a Triumph Herald. Uh, the engine itself is about 800 cc's, it's got high lift cam and uh, it's been ported and it's generally got about three times as much power as a normal Austin 7. The cooling system of course has to be uprated as well and this one has a four bladed fan, a thermostat which you'll see and an electric pump, that's essential. The um, battery uh, w was always a problem. Uh, you really want a small battery in a hill climb car because power and weight are the same equation in any type of racing sport and um, you need to be able to charge a 12 volt battery. So this is an alternator conversion. Down there you can see a high torque starter. That's also essential because if you put a 6 volt starter on a 12 volt battery it will fairly quickly discharge your battery and won't give you any starting power off, especially off a, a trackside battery that I've got. Moving on to the cockpit you'll see I fitted racing seats and seat belts so that if you have a crash you've got some protection. Also a rollover protection bar it has an extra stay into the passenger compartment to give it more stability. The gearbox is a dog box, a racing dog box gearbox, and it's also got a remote shift. It's got a, a wood for a wolf, a wolf, a wooler uh, remote shift. It's got the original uh, Ruby dashboard. Uh, you'll note the dashboard, the removable steering wheel. And this helps you get in and out of it. The Hunts Racing Seats, which are very good. Uh, Austin 7, no Austin 7 Special will be complete without, of course, the Brooklands uh, visors. Keep the, the flies and muck out your eyes. I think you can see that I've got uh, double wishbone front suspension for stability. This car goes around the corners very well indeed. This is the underneath of the car. If you are a Austin 7 originality nut, then this is this is going to absolutely horrify you. Uh, here we have a Hillman Imp from the 1960s steering. This links into the front, the, the uh, tie rods projected through this, the uh, suspension and connected up to either end. So you'll also note that the tie rods uh, are linked to the other side of the brake drums than normal. This uh, Bowden suspension had to be modified. We had to drop this uh, to make it look sensible and make room for the tie rods. You can see more of the Hillman Imp conversion. All of these parts were all made by me laboriously with my extensive workshop. 
I uh, note again the uh, double wishbone. One of them is terminated back at the back of the gearbox, and the other one is terminated at the side of the engine. Another thing that will horrify the originality experts on Austin 7 is the twin uh, master cylinder hydraulic system on this car. So it's got independent black and front with a balance bar which you can adjust. And it's also got some valves to hold the brakes uh, to get rid of the pedal. Um, on the back, approved pan hard rod. You'll note I've shifted the handbrake back by 150 millimeters so I can get the handbrake off while I'm still in my seatbelt. Canora virus lockdown has uh, led me to put new wings on this with my racing wheels so that it's actually road legal uh, with my racing wheels. Um, I don't think I've spoiled the stance of the car, I think it's actually improved it. Tell me what you think.